Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Unity 6 is now fully released. This is their stable long-term release. Previously this was called the LTS, but now there's no extra name, so it's just Unity 6. This is actually pretty big news because it's going to be the big new Unity release for quite some time. In the recent Unite conference they mentioned how the next version of Unity, that one will not come out next year, so Unity 7 is likely only in 2026, so that means this will be the main version going forward for quite a while. I've been using it myself since the preview version came out about 6 months ago, and it's actually been a pretty great experience. I haven't had any crashes or any issues, and I've also seen some people on Twitter and Reddit mention how their projects run faster or compile faster after upgrading, so this seems like a nice stable performance version. This version has some pretty exciting new features, mainly on graphics and multiplayer, alongside four really awesome completely free samples you can download. I've posted links to everything that I'm going to mention in the description, and now technically this version actually came out about a week ago. I'm a little bit late with this video because I've been hard at work finishing my .rts course. I've been working on that non-stop trying to get it fully complete by the end of this month, and thankfully I'm very close to being done. I put out another update a few days ago adding a dozen more lectures, covering things like Fog of War, Hordes, Ragdolls, and a bunch more. I used Unity 6 to build a game in this course, and like I said, so far it has been a really great experience. The last lecture should be out within this week and then it won't be done, which means that the free video containing about the first 6 hours of the course, about 6 hours of free dots knowledge, that free video will be coming out sometime within the next month. So yeah, that's why I'm a bit late with this video, but let's see everything that Unity 6 has to offer. The main thing is really all about graphics. You've got the GPU resin drawer, GPU opals and culling, and spatial and temporal post-processing. Those are three features that are pretty simple to enable, and will make almost every game run much better. Now for me, I am not a graphics programmer, so having something where I just take a single checkbox and everything runs much better, that is a huge benefit. Another awesome graphics feature are adaptive probe volumes. This one helps you automatically place a ton of light probes in the world. There's no need to manually place them. This is how you can bake some super high quality lighting. With this you can get super realistic both direct and indirect lighting. Then you can also bake different lighting scenarios and blend between them to get some really gorgeous day-night cycles. So all in all, really awesome stuff. On multiplayer, Unity 6 also brings a bunch of nice things. There's the multiplayer center. This one is where you can easily browse all of the multiplayer tools that Unity has. Which by the way, I made an entire video on this topic explaining what each tool does. The multiplayer center is a really nice guided path where you can define what type of game you're making and to recommend what tools to best use to make that game. For example, do you use dedicated servers or peer-to-peer? -peer? Do you use netcode for game objects or netcode for entities? Do you use cloud code or direct connection and so on? Basically, you choose the game type and then to automatically recommend tools, and you can easily install all of them in just one click. Then, to also help you get started, they also have multiplayer widgets. These are some tiny, easy-to-use widgets that help you get started super fast. You literally just drag and drop a component, and all of a sudden you have lobby or relay fully working. So it's really great for quickly prototyping. Next is a really huge improvement in multiplayer, it is multiplayer play mode. Iteration speed is always super important, and when it comes to multiplayer, it used to be quite tricky because it takes quite a while to make a proper build. But now, with multiplayer play mode, it really just spawns new instances of the editor, and you can very quickly, very easily test out and verify that your multiplayer code is working. It just spawns multiple windows, they're all connected together, you can read the console for all of them, so everything is much, much better. This change alone makes multiplayer development work so much faster. Another really awesome multiplayer feature in Unity 6 is distributed authority. This one basically lets you split authority over multiple objects across multiple clients, meaning not just a single host owning everything. So you can have multiple clients, each of them having ownership of their own corner of the world. This lets you much more easily build larger multiplayer games while still having just a host-to-client connection. Multiplayer games can be a lot of fun to play and develop, so I really like how they're making more and more tools to make that process as easy as possible. By the way, I have my own free course on making a game with netcode for game objects. If you want to make multiplayer games, definitely check it out. And the other networking tool set is netcode for entities. Now that I'm about to finish my DOTS course, finish the single player section, now that I'm almost done to that, I plan to go research netcode for entities, and depending on how complex it is, I might just make an expansion to the course, or perhaps a separate mini course focused all about netcode for entities. Another big focus in Unity 6 is web, and specifically mobile web, meaning how you can play Unity games directly in a mobile browser. This is an area that I'm not very familiar with, but I do remember when they first announced this, which I believe was last Unite. Back then there were huge cheers from the crowd, so I do believe this is a pretty big thing. And Unity 6 also brings nice improvements to performance in general, and also increasing the memory limit to 4GB. Then another area of focus in Unity 6 is their Muse AI toolset. I haven't looked at this one in many months, but it seems they've been improving it quite significantly. You've got chat now directly in the editor, Muse texture and sprite are much much better, Muse animate looks really cool, and Synthes is continually getting a bunch of improvements. Then in general, Unity 6 also has improvements to VFX graph, shader graph, there's things on UI toolkit, memory profiler, and a bunch more. And one of the most awesome things with this release is something that everyone loves, free complete samples. 
With Unity 6, they published the Fantasy Kingdom demo. This is the one with the awesome graphics demo. It looks really gorgeous. You can download it for free, and it actually includes this scene with all of these awesome assets. Now, the license does say that these assets are for non-commercial use only. So technically, if you want to use it in a commercial game, then you still need to pick up the normal pack. Now, the two awesome temples are the Time Ghost, there's the Character Pack, and also the Environment Pack. Now, this is my new favorite cinematic. It looks super cool, super high detail. The character is insanely high quality. It has some really complex mesh deformation. And of course, it has some really impressive hair tech. I definitely want to inspect this. Then the environment is also huge with an excellent amount of detail. Look at all of these millions of blades of grass. So definitely go ahead and download these three projects to inspect how it all works. And the final sample is the Mega City Metro, which has been updated to work with Unity 6. This is their large scale multiplayer sample. It includes 100 players all playing in a game, all with interpolation, lag compensation, and a bunch of other features. It has all those features built in, all of those connections to all of those Unity services, so definitely check it out if you want to learn how that works. So no, lots of awesome free samples for you to download and inspect. Also, even though I was only able to make this video a little bit late compared to when Unity 6 came out, I did mention it in my Game Dev Report newsletter last week. I write that one every Sunday. It's an easy to read newsletter. It's where I cover the latest Game Dev news and any interesting articles that I come across. Then another super big news this week were the Unity Awards. I love how they set up this event. Previously the awards were really just a blog post, but now they made a proper event. They made a fun live stream showing the games and the awards. I also live streamed myself watching the event. That was pretty fun, so thank you all for joining me. In their live stream, they announced all the winners and also showcased a bunch of really awesome Unity games. I think this is really great. Making this into an event means more opportunities for games made with Unity to get a little bit more visibility. So I really hope they keep making an event kind of like this every single year. There were lots of really awesome games shown. One of my favorites was Deliver at All Costs. It has a really nice asymmetric camera and some really satisfying destruction. Looks super cool. Another one of my favorites was Lost Skies. It's a very vertical game with a bunch of floating islands. And it also has a really cool grappling hook coupled with the wingsuit. So it makes it seem like just moving in this world feels really satisfying. So you have lots of awesome games shown. And for the winners of the event itself, for best desktop console game, we have Super Mario RPG. Quite interesting to see Nintendo Studio using Unity. For me, I think I voted for El Paso Elsewhere. That one looks super cool. Then for best mobile game, Hello Kitty Highland Adventure. Back at Unite, I played Ridiculous Fishing, and I really loved it, and also played the original one many, many years ago. That was super cool. For best AR and VR game, the winner was Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. Honestly, I didn't even know that this one came out. I do know that the original Arizona Sunshine 1 is one of my favorite VR games of all time. For best multiplayer game, the winner is Party Animals. This was at one point one of the most wishlisted games on Steam. It had an insane amount of wishlists. For me on this one, I think I voted for V Rising, really awesome game. Still haven't tried the 1.0 version though, so I need to get to that. For best 2D visuals, we have Cat Garden. Definitely has a really cool, interesting look, and all of these were all very unique as well. For best 3D visuals, the winner was Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. This is definitely a masterpiece when it comes to just stylized action. The flow of the game looks really satisfying. It's impressive how they made a game that looks this good and runs this well, even runs on a Switch. For most anticipated game, this is probably the most obvious award for Hollow Knight Song. Song. I actually checked, and they've been winning most anticipated games since 2020, since the 2020 awards. So yep, whenever that game does come out, it is definitely going to be a huge hit. Then for the Golden Cube Award, this is kind of their main award. The winner was Cocoon. It's definitely a very strange, very interesting game. For the section on the Asset Store winners, this is also really cool. For Publisher of the Year, we have Nature Manufacturer. If you want high quality, realistic environments, then yeah, definitely look at their assets. The Lava one is really awesome, really cool. Then for Best Development, the winner was Gaia Pro. This is basically the default choice if you want to make any kind of open world game. It's what I used when I did try to make an open world game really quickly. On this one, I think I voted for Asset Inventory 2. It's a really awesome asset. If you have plenty of assets, then this one is really a must-have. For Best Artistic Tool, here we have Cozy Stylized Weather. Adding stylized weather is one of the easiest ways to make your game really stand out. I think for this one, I voted for Umber Soft Shadows. If you want nice soft shadows, then definitely look into this one. For Best Artistic Content, the winner was Stylized Nature. Pretty much all of these are really awesome. It was quite interesting to see this pack, the Kawaii Animations. This one getting nominated was pretty fun. It's definitely a very unique pack. And then for the Community Winners. For the best devlog series, Sam was the winner. Her devlogs are always quite interesting. And this was definitely a very tough category. Aya has some really awesome devlogs on his game Mono Valley. And Sasquatch Studios. The devlogs on Samurado are also looking quite cool. And Luke Muscat, who just recently launched his game. Devlogs are also very entertaining, and the game is actually really cool. And for these other three, I was actually not quite familiar with them. Then here it is, the best tutorial series, and yep, I'm actually the winner. That's really awesome. Thank you all so much for voting for me. I try my best to make the best videos, and specifically the best tutorials possible. I try my best to teach all kinds of things, both for complete beginners, for advanced users, making it all step-by-step -step easily understandable. So I do work very hard to make it the best can be, and I'm really thankful that all of you enjoy the content. So thank you all so much for voting for me, and I do hope to continue being worthy of your votes for many years in the future. The other nominees are also really awesome. 
Coco Code has some really awesome videos, very well edited. Especially if you want to do something on DNT recording, definitely check out his channel. Dilmer has some awesome stuff on AR and VR. If you want to learn about that area, definitely go check out his channel. And Gitman has some really awesome, very interesting videos. Many interesting tutorials on very niche topics that no one else covers. So definitely check out all of these channels. And I wasn't very familiar with these two, but I'm definitely going to start following them. Then for the best live streamer, and the winner is the Game Dev Show. It's a really awesome show. It's something that I download every time when I go for a run or go for a walk. And then over here, Turbo Makes Games with the Hot Pass Show. If you're into dots, then definitely check out that live stream. Then for the industry winners, this is the area that is not within game dev. I actually did an interesting video a while ago on exactly this topic, how to use Unity for not game dev. So this is basically that, lots of use cases that are not related to making games. So for best training application, some kind of virtual hangar. This one looks really complex, like it has millions of parts. Definitely quite a fascinating thing. For best embedded system, apparently there's an OS by Mercedes. It looks super futuristic, very interesting. For innovative customer experience, there's an AR tryout where you can apparently play some things and see them. And for the Innovation Award, there's one with this huge title, basically automation of some kind of logistics thing. I didn't quite get it, but it does seem quite interesting. Then a really awesome award, the Student Project, and the winner was the Work Cleaner. I think it's really awesome how Unity actually makes an effort to promote and highlight these student games. A similar one is the Youth Creators Award. Again, an awesome thing to highlight people who are just starting with game dev and making some really awesome things. And for Best Social Impact was Crab God, which looks quite interesting. So yep, those were the 16th annual Unity Awards. Again, thank you all so much for voting for me. I love the fact that my tutorials have helped out a ton of people. When I recently went to Unite, I met tons of cool people in real life who told me that basically they started making games or they got a job in the games industry because of my tutorials. That is really awesome, I love hearing that. And now getting this award, which is actually the third year in a row, that is really awesome. It tells me that I'm doing things right. But the other nominees, they are also really awesome. So I'm very much very motivated to keep on improving. I'm very motivated to keep being worthy of your votes and to keep helping you on your game dev journey. Definitely stay tuned for more awesome videos both in the near future and for many many years to come. My goal is to make tons and tons of tutorials to help you and really anyone build the games of their dreams. Alright so go check out Unity 6, stay tuned for the final lecture on my DOTS course, thank you all again for voting for me on the Unity Awards, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.